Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today is the birthday of William Shakespeare. So that's a reason to celebrate today. William Shakespeare, as you know, is one of our greatest writers. He's considered to be the bard of English literature. Now, William Shakespeare apparently was born on this day, and he also died on this day. I don't think they know exactly when he was born, but it's assumed he was born on this day, and they have evidence that he died on the 23rd of April. So that's very interesting. And it also happens to be St. George's Day. Now, you might think that that's a really big day to celebrate, like St. Patrick's Day. But actually, the celebrations are very low-key. Low-key just means uh, something that we don't really make a big celebration of. Something which is low-key is something which is not celebrated in a huge way. Birthdays, as we get older, tend to be very low-key. Maybe one way to think about St. George's Day is the same as St. Valentine's Day. Now, St. Valentine's Day is a really big day in comparison, but it's just really a day in the calendar. It's a day that we all know about, but unless you're young, pretty, and dating, we kind of ignore it. We kind of ignore it. So, St. George's Day is like that as well. Um, there's no particular celebration and in fact, when I was a little boy, I didn't even know when St. George's Day was. As the UK is made up of four different nations, these four nations each have their own patron saints. And until recently, these saints were largely ignored. But now in Scotland, St. Andrew's Day is a public holiday. And I think it's the same for St. David's Day in Wales. Northern Ireland has St. Patrick's Day, which you already know is a huge celebration. But St. George's Day is rather low-key. We could say the same about uh, Shakespeare's birthday. I only know about this because it popped up in a news report. It's not something that we rush out and celebrate. Other countries seem to celebrate these days more than we do. For example, in Spain, they have a festival on this day where they give a book to the friends. Well, of course, we don't have those kinds of community structures where we can easily give books to anyone. But uh, it's interesting to know that this date in other countries is also associated with books, learning, St. George. And of course, because Britain had many colonies in the world, St. George is remembered throughout the world as well. Because the four nations are becoming more separate from the central government, these days are becoming heavily politicised. St. Andrew's Day in Scotland is a public holiday. England doesn't have that, but it wants it. And on this day, many English people again will be asking the central government, please give us our own parliament. Because the central government gave Scotland its own parliament, it gave Northern Ireland its own parliament and Wales, but 
it didn't give England its own parliament. I think probably because it knew that if it gave England its own parliament, all four areas would turn around and say, well, <laughs> why do we need a central government then? So I suppose it's all about politics and power. But since the 1990s, that's when uh, different areas were given their own governments in the four nations, English people have been calling for an English parliament as well. And of course, opponents of the government are saying, well, vote for me. The first thing I'll do is give England its own parliament and make St George's Day a public holiday. I remember in 2002, the government in London, for St Patrick's Day, they changed all of the colours in the fountains in Trafalgar Square to become green, so that the colour of the water would be green. English people were a little bit unhappy because the government spent £10,000 making the water green for one day in Trafalgar Square and then they didn't do anything for St George's Day. So, from that day, many English people have been setting up special St George's Day festivals in Trafalgar Square just to remind people that it's okay to be English and to celebrate it. St George's Day is celebrated most in sport. In rugby and football, you can see the English flag, which is, I think, a red cross on a white background. And of course, you can also see it in our UK flag, which has all of the colours of at least three of the four nations. The Welsh flag, for some reason, isn't in our UK flag. I think that might be because uh, Wales is technically a principality. It's not actually a country, if I remember correctly. But the UK flag, which is called the Union Jack, has most of our countries printed on it, which gives it its unique design. But we, we generally don't uh, wave our flags very much. We're very low-key with them. And remember, that's today's phrase. Something which is low-key is something which is not a huge thing. It's something which takes place just beneath the radar. Something which happens, like birthdays or St. Valentine's Day, when you're older, those festivals become rather low-key. And of course, low-key is a musical term about how something is played musically, quite low and gentle rather than in some kind of loud, abrasive way. So, yes, lots to celebrate today. The birthday and death of William Shakespeare, uh, St. George's Day, and if you're in Spain, you will know that this is the day when you give a book to your friend. Uh, I think, is it a book and a flower? A book and a rose? It's something like that anyway, where you give uh, books and a flower to your friends. Very nice festival, that. Sadly, we don't have anything like that. If you want to celebrate St. George's Day, um, buy some fish and chips, perhaps. What other stereotypes are there of English people? Ignore your neighbours, maybe? <laughs> well, these are some things you could do to think about St George's Day. But even many English people won't know that today is St George's Day, which is why they're kind of demanding 
that it becomes a public holiday. Anyway, speaking of St. Valentine's Day and romance, there's a couple of stories today in the media which I think you might be interested in. So the first one is a study which has been done by a university in Israel and it says men are more likely to tell the truth to beautiful women. They've been doing some experiments and they are saying that people who are seen as more physically attractive uh, usually become more popular and earn more money. And the study has concluded that men are more likely to tell the truth to beautiful women. Actually, um, I was teaching last week and a woman appeared. I don't know where she was from. And she was really overdressed. She looked very, very glamorous. And she kept staring at the camera. She didn't answer any of my questions about English grammar. She just kept staring. And I looked behind me because I thought maybe there's something on the wall that she's staring at. I don't know. And then eventually, uh, after a long silence, she said, oh, uh, if I wanted to marry uh, somebody... Do you think I will have that chance? And first of all, I thought to myself, oh, she speaks. Because she'd sat there being silent for the whole of the lesson. And I responded with, well, your condition was wrong. Um, and she said, yeah, yeah, but do you think I'm beautiful enough to marry again? Um, and I said, not with those conditionals, you're not. You made a kind of big mistake there. I said, you said, um, if I wanted to marry again, do you think I will be beautiful enough? And of course, you should say, um, if I wanted to marry again, do you think I would be beautiful enough? Because of course... She wanted to use the second conditional, assuming this was a hypothetical question. Uh, she'd need to use the past tense along with would, not the past tense with will. And she just kept asking the same thing. And I just kept repeating the same thing. Well, not until you correct your conditionals. No. And she said, yeah, but do you think I'm beautiful? And I said, well... Not with that grammar, no. And the more she asked the question, the more insulting I became about her grammar because I wanted her to remember that she was in the class to learn English, not to receive compliments about her beauty. And then eventually she said, do you think I'm beautiful? And I said, no, not with that kind of grammar. If you want a compliment, practice your conditionals. And then I sent her my conditional booklet, hoping that she would actually study them. And she looked kind of offended. So maybe it's true. Maybe men are more likely to tell the truth to beautiful women. But I don't know why she was asking me this. And uh, I wasn't very comfortable with all of the staring. But, um, well... Hopefully, whatever husband she meets in the future, uh, if he's going to be British or American, can help her with the conditionals. But she seemed quite, uh, quite determined to get an answer. And uh, another story which is going around today is that hospital patients treated by women doctors are less likely to die. It says here... Um, female patients are more likely to benefit from the gentle touch of female physicians 
the mortality rate for ladies was 8.15% when treated by women compared to 8.38% when the doctor was male. Uh, and men, apparently, the figure is slightly smaller. Uh, when they were treated by a female doctor, they also um, were showing um, more and higher uh, rates of recovery. Mm, I'm not quite sure what they're trying to say with this, except the headline which says hospital patients treated by women doctors are less likely to die. Oh, well, that's good to know, isn't it? Study lead Professor Yusuke Sugagawa of University of California said, our findings indicate that female and male physicians practice medicine differently. And these differences have a meaningful impact on patients' health outcomes. Oh dear, well, good luck if you want to see a doctor. I know that here, if you want to make a doctor's appointment to your family doctor, it's all telephony-based. So you don't actually get to um you don't actually get to see anybody. Uh it's simply a telephone call that you receive. Um well the last time I had to call the doctor uh was for one of my routine uh diabetes checkups. I mean, how they do that over the phone, I've no idea. It, it just seems crazy. So she's not obviously seeing me. She's talking to me on the telephone. And she said, uh, okay, so how are you feeling? I said, fine. She said, um, uh, how's your diabetes going? I said, well, yeah, fine. I've lost uh, four kilograms. Of course, I didn't say kilograms. I had to put it into the imperial measurements, which is stones because we don't use the metric system as you know and she seemed really interested suddenly she got excited and she said so how exactly were you able to lose that amount of weight I said well I've been walking the summer's here and she said yeah but um, what exactly did you do to lose this amount of weight I said, well, as I mentioned, I've been walking more, going out, eating healthily. And she just kept asking me. And I was thinking to myself, well, maybe she's fat. Maybe she's overweight. And that's why she keeps asking. Because she was a little bit obsessive about this. And so how exactly is it? Tell me again that you were able to lose uh, weight. And I'm thinking, why are you so interested? <laughs> so it's, it's very... Um, very uh, difficult, of course, in a telephony-based environment. Um, but they're saying here, yeah, that in the hospitals, um, you live longer if you're treated by a woman. Oh, it depends on her condition, was, I suppose, or her level of grammar, as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, if you are celebrating um, St. George's Day today, I hope you enjoy it. Remember, it's Shakespeare's birthday as well. Uh, maybe a nice time to give a present to somebody of a book. Um, if you do know any English people, uh, wish them happy St. George's Day and then be very surprised when they tell you that uh, they didn't know it was today. And that's it from me. So take care and see you all again soon. Bye.